If you were interested in learning who's the disembodied voice behind your favorite Tea Group Up videos, then please keep watching. Okay, so this video is for those who are interested in learning a little bit more about the person that um, are creating these videos. Uh, to answer some questions about my personal life or what have you and my YouTube channel uh, to give you uh, just an idea of what's going on in the background. So if you were interested, then please continue watching. Okay, so I'm going to ask myself in question form so that um, I can better keep a list of what's going on here and I don't get lost. Okay, so let's begin. The first question is, why did I choose this channel name? Okay, so initially this channel uh, is supposed to have uh, Tigre Pup, which is a reference to uh, the Louisiana uh, LSU Tigers. Uh, if you remember, um, are you aware, in the very beginning, um, the font and the coloring of the font was gr uh, purple and gold. Um, and um, yeah, uh, honestly, I just thought this was a cute name, something I just thought of. Um, it really has no meaning. It's just a channel name that I thought of that I really liked, and I decided to use it for my channel. Uh, its early beginnings had the LSU uh, theme in mind, and so that answers the first question. Okay, so the next question is, what is your channel about? Okay, so my channel is about um, doing reviews and tutorials. Uh, in the very beginning, I was trying to do the cosmetology tutorials and whatnot and, and haircuts and, and things like that. But it kind of morphed into something else because it started um, becoming more about uh, doing reviews and tutorials on things. Um, compare and contrast which is uh, something that I feel like this channel has become um, as opposed to being like a cosmetology learning channel or what have you so um, again uh, it's basically a beauty focused um, review tutorial uh, compare and contrast type of channel um, so that's uh, the second question okay so the next question I have is when did you start your channel uh, if I look on my timeline, uh, apparently I started my channel. My first video was women's haircut tutorial. I have at today's date, uh, 44 views. It was started on May 22nd, 2020. Okay. So that would be four years ago. Uh, currently I have 1,543 uh, subscribers. Okay. So why didn't you show your face when you first started your channel? Um, to answer that question in the very beginning, uh, I just wasn't prepared. Uh, eventually I did become prepared because I was like, well, if somebody in my family or some coworker or, or what have you doesn't like uh, my channel and you know, what are they going to do? You know what I'm saying? They're going to tease me, uh, make fun of me. You know what I'm saying? And then I'm getting much older now and, um, uh, I don't mm -hmm. think it's as important as it was. I mean, it's important to me what people think, but not as much. Does that make any sense? Anyway, this is my channel. I built it up from the ground up and um, yeah, I'll do what I please. Okay. So uh, yeah, that is the reason why in the very beginning I didn't, but eventually I began to show my face and what have you because um, yeah, that's the reason why. Okay, so next question, why did you start your YouTube channel? Uh, I have about four different um, reasons why, and I'll give it to you in a second. Okay, so the first reason would be exposure uh, in order to gather a clientele, perhaps uh, an opportunity to show others my skill set to a possible employer or clientele or client. Um. But then again, like I said before, my content changed direction and I began to do reviews and tutorials that are more geared towards uh, the regular consumer uh, as opposed to like an instructor or uh, a school or, 
a cosmetology school or um, someone that can give me a job, uh, basically. Um, yeah, so uh, eventually uh, that kind of went out the window. and uh, But yeah, uh, initially it was about exposure. And uh, I guess it, you can kind of say it's about exposure now because um, when I'm showing people my skill set and showing my uh, level of skill and knowledge in the particular craft, okay, and uh, maybe gain some fans, uh, subscribers, and maybe earn some money, okay? Which brings me to my next uh, reason why I started my YouTube channel. Uh, it was to make uh, more money. I had dreams of quitting my job and become a full-time uh, YouTuber, uh, which is uh, a lot more difficult than uh, it actually seems. Um, but, uh, but yeah, um, that was another, the second reason why I started my YouTube channel was that uh, instead of supporting these companies and their families and their gener gener generational wealth and lifestyle, I could be doing my own, building my own generational wealth and lifestyle. Um, so that's the second reason. Uh, the third reason is uh, working on this YouTube channel has been a distraction against my current uh, situation. And when I say my current situation, I mean specifically my job. Uh, I feel that I'm experiencing discrimination on my job in the way of making, getting raises, promotions, um, more money, uh, things like that. Uh, so it's been kind of like an escape from my circumstances. Okay. Uh, I would also like to say, uh, I guess this would tie into exposure. Uh, the, the first reason I have a current, uh, Louisiana license and an instructor's license. Okay. And I couldn't find any work in this field. Um, so this is sort of like a reach around for me. Um, I'm doing something like that, but not quite. I don't know if that makes any sense. But these are the reasons why I decided to start my YouTube channel. Okay, so uh, my next question, honestly, I don't remember what number. Um, where do you see your channel going in the next five years? Uh, I would like to say I'm kind of like unsure. Uh, ever since, uh, I don't know if you saw my previous video that I did about the TikTok um, situation that I had. Uh, I don't think I'm going to be growing very much. Uh, I think I uh, said all of that in that video. So uh, I am in the works of starting another project. Uh, so just keep an eye out for that. Uh, also, uh, I am trying to do these videos where I do more like story times and what have you. And I know some people, they don't like, uh, cause I'm doing a voiceover right now. Honestly, I've tried so many times to do this question and answer video on uh, in, you know, with my, uh, with myself online and what have you. And I found it so difficult and it was so many times I had to redo it. Honestly, I like the format of the voiceover, which is, which could be a negativism for me, but if you rock with me, you rock with me. If you don't, then you just don't. Okay. And this is the form I am more com most comfortable in, comfortable in as of right now. So unfortunately, this is what I'm going to have to uh, do and I'm doing in this video, which is the voiceover. Um, I wanted to do actually sitting in front of you and doing a video where you look at me and stuff like that. But I feel so uncomfortable. But uh, but yeah, uh, maybe in time. But right now, this is what I'm doing right now. OK. OK, so the next question I have is why the drag? OK, uh, I like it to give you an answer about that. OK, uh, let's see. Initially, that was for uh, my wigs. Uh, if you don't know, I had created a wig company. Uh, unfortunately, it's not doing very well. Um, but anyway, I was showing people, women, men, doesn't matter. I don't care. If you have money and you can purchase a wig from me, then uh, I would be very grateful, honestly. But when I was first starting off my wig line, I couldn't get any family members or, or friends to model them for me. So I decided to model them for myself. I've seen a lot of guys doing that on YouTube. And uh, the aesthetic was um, some peop some of those guys, they had the beard and all this other stuff. Honestly, if I'm going to wear a wig and wear 
and you know try to show a, a feminine wig or whatever why would I have I don't this this is my opinion personally why would I have a beard and a mustache and everything if I'm trying to sell you something uh to a woman or or what have you you know what I'm saying I don't know that's how I felt about the situation which is why I did what I did uh and I know a lot of people have a problem with that and that's okay but like I said um this is my channel I built it from the ground up and I do know I get a uh, very few views, not very many. I think maybe like 60. I don't know if it's the same person that keep watching the video or different people. Who knows? But, um, but yeah, uh, I'm going to do it anyway, because like I said, uh, I am trying to, I have like a couple of wigs and what have you in stock. And, um, I'd like to show you how to get the best out of them and how you can make them look. So, uh, I modeled them myself. And if that's a problem, I mean, there's a million other companies you can pur purchase your wigs from and what have you, but I'm going to do what I got to do. You know what I'm saying? So, um, that answers that question. Okay. So at this point, I want to get uh, a little bit more personal. Uh, the previous questions were about the channel and now I'm going to answer questions about myself. Okay. Um, Currently, I live in the state of Louisiana. I'm 44 years old. I'm a Capricorn sign. I'm a licensed cosmetologist and a cosmetology instructor in the state of Louisiana. Um, I am the oldest of five siblings. Um, and that's actually kind of complicated. Like on my daddy's side, um, I was an only child. And on my mama's side, I had five siblings, but all of them had the same daddy and I had a different daddy. Okay. And I live with my partner. Um, I am discreet and not DL. And I hope you don't get that confused. The, those are two different things. Okay. Uh, I have worked as a cosmetologist in uh, Smart Style, uh, JCPenney, and two uh, Paul Mitchell Focus Salons. Okay. Uh, I haven't been working in the field recently. Um, I have some reasons for that. I'm going to give you in a second. Okay. As for the reasons why I am not currently uh, working as a hairstylist. Um, there's no sick or vacation time. Um, basically, it's like minimum wage or commission. And you have to do a lot of work to get commission. Okay. And uh, it just wasn't working out for me. Uh, the work is seasonal. You have your busy... Uh, seasons where you have birthdays holidays graduations so if you wanted a steady stream of income this would not be the job for you uh honestly uh personality incompatibility in my opinion i think this this particular job requires you to be outgoing and a people person um and i don't think i'm neither of those um, my focus is to elevate my skill set and become the best hairstylist physically. But as far as like my people skills, uh, it's just not up to uh, the task as far as like being outgoing and a personable person. So uh, I think um, that's the reason why uh, working as a hairstylist did not work out for me. Okay. Okay, so now I would like to discuss with you the reason why I'm not currently working as a cosmetology instructor. Um, honestly, I think I'll have to do a video about this, but uh, it's very, been very hard in finding work. I've had a couple of interviews, but apparently I wasn't um, chosen. And um, I've never had the opportunity to actually work in the field of, of being a cosmetology instructor, which is um, kind of like uh, disheartening because I do have a student loan that I'm currently paying for. And um, I couldn't tell you if I actually enjoyed being a cosmetology instructor or not because I've never worked in a field. Um, a lot of these cosmetology instructors, they, they get in these jobs and they stay in there for years. I mean, they stay in the field until they like die and stuff. So there's not very many openings. Uh, and plus, I haven't had much luck in finding work. And like I said, uh, I, I do intend on making a video about this. 
And uh, just keep an eye out for that, okay? Okay, so I guess the next question I'd like to ask, sir, is what was my specialty? Um, I really enjoyed doing press and curls, relaxers, and color. And, and haircuts, too. Uh, I really enjoyed doing haircuts and things like that. And styling. Uh, that's pretty much what my quote-unquote specialty uh, is, uh, was. Uh, but yeah, moving on. Okay, so uh, the next question is, what made you, or when did you realize you had an interest in doing hair and things of that nature? Um, it all started when I would do doodlings or drawings of women in their hair. Um, I think it came from, I was looking in cartoon, not cartoon, uh, comic books and whatnot. And I tried to imitate the drawings and I drew the hair long and stuff like that. Eventually that uh, transferred over. Uh, my grandma, she used to let me part her scalp and grease her scalp uh, and scratch her scalp with a comb. And at the time, uh, Tina Turner was very popular with her uh, wild, crazy, sticking up hair and whatnot. And well, actually, that, that was probably Patti LaBelle. But um, this was... We would, I was imitating uh, Tina Turner hairstyle with my grandma's hair. <laughs> and I would scratch her scalp. And then at the end, I would spike her hair up. Like, uh, well, at the time, I thought it was Tina Turner. But it was more like Patti LaBelle type of look anyway. Uh, that uh, transferred over to, uh, I think, one time my sister had a, a Christie doll, which is the black one. And uh, I don't know where the body went, but I, I had her like her head or whatever. <laughs> And I would comb my hair and curl it and all type of stuff. And um, yeah, that transferred into uh, me eventually becoming interested in purchasing a mannequin head, which uh, after that, I just was like mannequin head crazy. And um, I would go to Beauty Mart. At this time, it was located on Car in Carrollton Shopping Center. And I would purchase a, a mannequin head, which uh, <laughs> I have a story about that. Okay. <laughs> okay. So I was... Uh, I wouldn't say afraid, but like shame to purchase like a mannequin head and stuff. So I would walk around and pretend like I was looking at all type of stuff. And I was kind of scared people were going to think I, I'm attempting to steal something, which I wasn't. I just was waiting for the register area to be clear so I can go to the cashier and ask for a head, which was behind the counter up on a top shelf. And she'd have to go up there and get a ladder or something and go get it. And I'm like, oh, my God, it was just freaking me out. You know what I'm saying? Because she was taking so long and I was just trying to get my mannequin and get up on out of there. And when I finally did get my mannequin and, and my little stand or whatever, um, I would do roller sets and all kind of stuff, you know, do haircuts and color. And it was really uh, fun. It led me to experimenting with hair. Um, okay, so when um, I just finally decided to go to cosmetology school, uh, at the time, I was working as a security guard and um, I had an incident where I was exiled onto the overnight shift. I believe it was from 10 p.m. to 6 p.m. And so uh, classes would begin at 8 o'clock in the morning. Uh, but they had overnight classes, but Saturdays were really rough because um, the classes would begin at 8 o'clock in the morning and at 5 or something. Uh, but every other class, I did the evening classes. And by the time I got out of... Uh, evening class I had to dash over to work just to make sure I made it on time so it was a bit of a struggle for those couple of months I did part-time because night classes were part-time but eventually um, I got my cosmetology um, it was during the time actually it was sometime before Katrina and it had to continue after okay so uh my schooling was interrupted, but um, yeah, eventually I did get my uh, cosmetology license and the first job I I did was uh, work at Smart Style. Okay, so this next uh, section, I want to talk about you, uh, my viewer. So I'm just going to go over a few things to um, let you know who you are. Okay, so continue watching. Okay, so the for the videos that are my most popular uh, shorts, 
Uh, as you can see, it's my Wella Color Charm toners uh, and my Wella Color Charm liquid toners, as you can see here. Seems like y'all really enjoyed uh, those types of videos. Okay, and as for my actual videos, again, uh, it's my Wella Color Charm uh, toners video. I believe that's my most recent one. And um, the one where I, I have semi-permanent hair color explained. So y'all really seem to enjoy uh, those uh, videos, actual videos. The uh, previous one was about my shorts. Okay, so according to uh, YouTube, you really, everybody watches my video, those that watch videos in the last 28 days, apparently. Everybody watches my videos, everybody watches my shorts, but I don't even understand why they have live right there. Because it should be nobody watches it because I haven't even done a live yet. I don't know. Okay, so moving on, uh, watch time from subscribers for the lifetime of my uh, video history from January the 18th of 2010 to November 27th of 2024, 97.7% uh, are not subscribed and 2.3% is subscribed. Okay, so here it shows uh, the amount of people that are using um, subtitles when they watch my videos. 80.9% uh, are not using subtitles and 18.5% are using English subtitles and uh, less than 1% are using Spanish uh, subtitles, okay? Okay, so right here, this shows that 60% of my viewers are from the United States. As we can see here, for the lifetime of all of the videos that I've been doing. Okay, so right here uh, is showing throughout the lifetime of all of my videos. A majority of people are between 25 and 34, followed by 35 and 44, followed by 45 and 54. Followed by 18 to 24, and at the very least, uh, I have some 55 to 64 year olds watching my videos. Okay, so right here, throughout the entire lifetime of all of my videos that I've done between January 18, 2010, to Novo November 27, 2024, okay, 80.2% uh, are female and 19.8% are male. Okay, so right here I decided to add in the video that I wanted to initially do, but it just was taking too many times. So I decided to include that. So if you want to check it out, please continue watching. If you want to jump off here, then um, I guess I'll catch you in the next video. And thank you for watching. Hello and welcome to the Tigre Pup channel. If you are interested in learning who's the disembodied voice of your favorite videos, then please continue watching. Okay, so the name of my YouTube channel is T Grip Pub, and I'm pretty sure people are wondering where the name came from. Honestly, it was just something I thought of. It kind of relates to LSU uh, Tigers. I don't know if you saw my videos from the very beginning. Uh, my logo, um, when I would use uh, my transitions, they had the gold and the purple, basically signifying that I'm a Louisiana resident. So, uh, it's partially has something to do with it, but T Grip Pup is the name of my YouTube channel. Okay, so my channel is basically beauty centered. It's about uh, makeup, hair, uh, reviews, tutorials, and uh, reviews on products and things like that. So that's basically what my channel is generally about. Okay, so uh, I first started my channel on May 22nd of 2020, so it's approximately three years now since I've been uploading on YouTube and had my channel, and I'm going by that date because that was the date of my first upload. Um, yeah, so that's when I, my channel be, first began. Okay, so in the early starts of my, my YouTube channel, uh, you may notice that you only saw a portion of my face. And um, at that time, I wasn't very comfortable 
in showing my full face for whatever reason. I keep that to myself. But um, eventually I kind of like grew into showing my full face, taking that chance. Um, I felt like it was time when I was ready. So that's why I'm here now. Okay, so why did I start my YouTube channel? Uh, in the beginning, it was exposure, uh, the opportunity to show what skills I do have for an employer and whatnot. Um, basically, my current job, even then, because I'm still working in the same place, uh, I was facing discrimination. So um, this was an outlet for Okay, so some of the reasons why I started my YouTube channel, I guess the first one would be exposure um, to be able to show possible employers my skill set, my ability to uh, instruct or train others in, you know, doing various hair techniques and things of that nature. My second reason was I was being, I am still currently working at the same job being discriminated against, um, being passed over for promotions, um, opportunities to make extra income and things of that nature. And it became sort of a hobby in a way to keep my mind distracted because I can't, I don't feel that I'm able to get out of the situation just yet. So um, this is something that turned out to be something that helps me cope with my current situation, which I've been going through it for like the past, uh, come the 28th of this month, it'll be six years. I am a currently licensed cosmetologist and cosmetology instructor in the state of Louisiana. Okay. So my first, um, uh, adventure into doing hair and things of that nature started with drawing women and drawing the hair and things of that nature which kind of like turned into me stealing my sister's dolls and playing in the hair and stuff like that and also um i used to scratch my grandma's scalp with a comb like this <laughs> i would part it and and you know used to comb the scratch her scalp and whatnot. And um, I think Tina Turner was pretty popular back then and I would spike her hair up. <laughs> and um, she was amused by it, you know. So eventually I got old enough where uh, I would go and purchase mannequins at, um, there was a store called the Beauty Mark. And I would go over there and buy a mannequin and, um, uh, I was so nervous because I thought people thought, would think I was a weirdo or something. Because <laughs> I wasn't going to school at the time. I was pretty young, pretty young. And um, I would try to wait until I hope I was hoping that they wouldn't think I was stealing something because I would kind of like. Walk around and look for look at things and as soon as. The area was clear around the cash register, I would then go and politely ask for a mannequin. They would have to go reach up on the shelf and get me a mannequin and then um, I'd pay for it and I would run out of there as fast as I could. I don't know where I was. I don't know where I was ashamed, actually, of getting like a mannequin from the, the cashier. And that woman, she'd been there for years. I mean, so she already knew what I was coming in there for. <laughs> but somehow that's what I would do. And then eventually I started doing mom's hair, my sister's hair, and things like that. Then eventually I decided to go to beauty school because I was like, why not? Okay, to answer that question of whether or not I'm still doing hair or whatnot, no, I'm not. I'm not working as a, a hairstylist. I'm not working as a cosmetology instructor. Um, well, I can answer a question about why I'm not working as a hairstylist. Uh, it's because, um, 
honestly, I wasn't making very much money or ga gaining clients for whatever reason. Uh, I have some, some thoughts of why that might be, but it wasn't working out for me. And plus, uh, the pay was very low. And it's, it's like seasonal. You know, back to school, you know, holidays and things like that. I needed something more stable, a stable source of income and something more than minimum wage. Uh, as far as the cosmetology instructor uh, portion of why I'm not working in the field, I'll have to do a, a separate video on that. But uh, no, I, I'm not working in... Uh, the cosmetology field at present. As for some of the places I did work when um, I first started, I worked at Smart Style for a couple of a couple of times. Uh, I've worked at um, J C Penney. I worked at a salon that was a Paul Mitchell focus salon. Basically, they use Paul Mitchell salon products and things like that. So. Those are some of the places that I worked in, some of the expertise I bring when I'm making my videos. Actually, yeah. <laughs>